report. Opening the meeting. Uh, <coughs> first order of business is the minutes. Do I have any? Oh. As much as I wish it were the right number, I think under the school bond authorization, then three lines down, it says the member towns will pay $14 million for the school. And I think there's a... It's closer to 100 million. Yeah, I think there's a digit missing there. I think so. Is it like this one? Okay, are there any other corrections? Right, and then that one. Yeah. I can't see who's back there. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know if that's the one you just went over. I didn't hear it. Um, it says about four lines down on the uh, Minuteman. Uh, this is about 361 million less than last year. Probably a thousand, or maybe a K is, should be there instead of 361,000. That's right. I wish it was 361. <laughs> well, no, because then that means right. last yes, year would be awful nasty. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. Okay, are there any others? Okay, I have a couple of modifications all the way down the bond authorization paragraph. Uh, a committee has been, a, uh, first one, the chair explained that a debt exclusion referendum would be uh, desirable. Uh, I was trying to think of a stronger word than that. I was going to say required, but it's technically not required, but uh, Unavoidable. Would be unavoidable. Yes. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> Where is that now? Uh, oh, near the bottom. Got it. Okay. And then the next sentence: A committee has been appointed to plan the town's response to this capital project. In other words, a group of the people who've been going, uh, meeting on Minute Man has been appointed by the selectmen to look at this and give their recommendations to the. Uh, just that. other board so any other corrections okay do I have a motion so moved. Second. second second okay moved and seconded to accept the minutes as corrected all those in favor we say aye aye, aye. opposed okay uh, I'm going to throw out a little editorial on the uh, Minuteman School Bonding Project. Uh, you heard me express my deepest fears um, last Wednesday, and the Minuteman superintendent responded with hope and love. Uh, I, unfortunately, the more I think about this, the more I think hope and love are, are not going to make it. Uh, so, uh, again, we have a small group that's been meeting sort of along that's going to revisit it and give the recommendations. Um, but when the FinCon goes to town meeting, it's going to be your names, you know, underneath there, not, not theirs. And so, uh, you know, I've been talking to people. What we're going to be looking at when this opens up, if we use today's operating cost, which could be a little less, might be more, we're going to be paying $35,000 a student. You know, because we're going to be paying about, we pay about twenty-five, twenty-six thousand 26000 a student now which is not wildly, it's the highest, but it's not, you know, there are a couple of schools like uh, Keith Tech and Framingham is like 22,000, uh, um, but it's still very high. Uh, and then we're gonna add 10 grand to that, and that's gonna be the, the capital. So all of a sudden now we're facing $35,000 a student. Um, and enrollment in Arlington is, is killing us, but. And once you get outside of 128, the enrollment's not going up that much. And uh, um, they're going to start, you know, uh, the 10 members who are left are going to start looking elsewhere or trying to dissuade, you know, their students from going to Minuteman because they can't afford $35,000 a student. The other thing that the superintendent said they were downsizing. Well, the more I look at it, I'm talking to a couple of people, they're not downsizing, the out-of-district students are evaporating. And, and the reason is that ninth graders can't come to Minutemen anymore. Yes. They have to stay in their home district 
and review things they want to do, and then in 10th grade, transfer to Minuteman. That's going to be really tough. Trying to get them after they've fallen in love with the high school quarterback or, uh, you know, cheerleader or whatever they've done. Uh, and so the, the reason that's dropped, and it's already below what our target is of 628, it's like 621 or something. Um, and, uh, you know, waiting lists have sort of dried up at least. In the meantime, we're going to have more competition because Waltham is building a new high school with its own, it's going to have its own vocational school. Uh, Medford is looking to expand it. So I'm just really afraid that we're going to end up with a $150 million white elephant out there. And we own a third of it. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the answer is, but um, I think we really need to think about this very intensely. So I'm really asking you for the next two weeks until we have to vote on April 13th uh, to, to talk to people, to think about it, to do some research, to go online, to um, you know, talk to other people and see, see, see what they think. Try to give as much thought to this as we can because this could be the biggest. Now, um, even if we say no, they'll just go to a referendum you know, on June 18th or whenever they do it. Uh, and well, you know, we can't stop them from doing that unless the Minuteman School Committee does. But how should I say, at least it's not on our heads, uh, you know, to warn people. So um, whether you vote for it or whether you vote against it, I'm just urging you to give a, give a lot of thought to this. Mary Margaret? But so our ninth graders will have to stay here to that, right? No, they only be, out of district. Only out of district, okay. So the, the, you know, our ninth graders will have, our eighth graders will decide yeah, okay. whether they yeah. want to go to Minuteman or whether they want to go here. And so, uh, you know, and then when we finish building our brand new high school, we could get that far. You know, maybe a lot fewer kids will want to go there. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a serious issue and, and I'm not sure you know, I suppose I get paid the big bucks to worry, and I do it really very well. Um, so that's Bill. I was curious uh, to what extent, um, in out of district ninth graders, how much revenue are we talking out of district? Uh, Probably about 17,000 a student. Three. It was getting to the point where it was up towards 20, but then of course all the other towns and cities that were sending students. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, uh, started complaining and moaning. So uh, the commissioner who determines all this, commissioner of education, uh, he's been bringing it down. So now I think it's it's someplace around 17,000. And uh, but that's all determined there. So I said if it's 17,000, you had 10 grand on top of that, now they're looking at 27,000. And uh, you know, there, there are alternatives. Um, you know, Neshoba only cost 16000 and they just rebuilt their school about 10 years ago. So, um, you know, I'm not saying to vote yes, I'm not saying to vote no at this time, I'm not sure what I'm doing myself, but I, I just, uh, you know, we, we jumped into Minuteman back in the early 70s, and maybe without totally thinking down the road, uh, it, sound, it sounded like a good idea at the time, but, um, you know, we don't want to make the same mistake. We want to really give it some, some good hard, evidence uh, and uh, some good hard thought. So that's my spiel. Okay, right now we have the ATED. Uh, this is the uh, Tourism Committee. What did we appropriate last year? Was it 1775? Yep. Oh, did somebody say yes? Yes. Okay. Hello. Hi. You're here alone today. I am. <laughs> so, well, it's nice. Um, so since since we uh, I was last year, since we were last year, um, so we had we were asking for three things the last time. So it was the website, um, help with a volunteer coordinator kind of person for the visitor center, and then just our regular committee budget. 
So we did meet with Alan, um, which was suggested, and we talked over the website idea, and we have some other ideas, including some sponsorship and stuff, and so we we're taking the website off the table. We, we're not gonna ask for the money for the website. Um, we would still like our traditional committee budget of 1775, and we would still like you to consider the 2500 though for the visitor center, because like as we explained, you know, we wanna keep it open as much as possible, and it's, it's really hard to do that with 100% volunteers. Um, and we, it, it may be a little more challenging this season too because of the Mass Ave work and the bike path um, crossing. We've already talked about that. We're gonna try to use the visitor center itself. But if that becomes, you know, at least part of the time, that, <clears throat> excuse me, that we can't, um, we decided that we were going to try to use the tent again, um, which we had done originally the first summer as a trial and see if we could use the lawn and the Jefferson Cutter House. So we, we want to be open as much as possible e either way. Um, and so, you know, we respectfully ask that you would consider that 2500 just to, to help us get through that. Okay. Now, who, I, I probably, we probably asked this question before, but it's uh, been several weeks now. Um, who are you thinking of? W would it be a town employee who would do this part-time? The 2,500? Um, you know, somebody that gets picked, we did talk to the town manager, and he's willing to oversee that. There's always, when we do the summer arts block party, there's a little bit of money um, that gets allocated out of that budget for somebody for sort of a similar purpose, but just for that particular event um, and he oversees that and he said he'd be willing to do the same thing for this so I think we would talk to him and then they would just you know pick somebody who was willing to do that for the season okay. so so they'd be the coordinator but it would f still be generally staffed with volunteers yeah I mean yes we, we wouldn't be able that wouldn't cover that to have that person there the whole time but we'd need you know we're hoping we're gonna get somebody who's gonna help us you know, with the recruitment and keeping it staffed, and then probably you know, be there part of the time too. But we'll still be we'll still be trying to use volunteers to keep it staffed. Okay. Uh, questions. We're getting very mellow in our old age. <laughs> okay. Time uh, and the budget was for the usual uh, materials and such to. Yep, and events and all of that. Yep. Yeah, okay. So for the seven to twelve carry the one. So you want forty two seventy five as your request. I think that sounds right. Okay. Yep. Any questions? Thank okay. you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Are the other people here yet, Gloria? I don't think so. Uh, they said they'd be here at eight. Eight o'clock. And it is. 744. Okay, so uh, the Tourism and Economic Development Committee uh, is requesting, if my math is correct, $4,275. What is the will of the committee? So move. Second. Okay, move and seconded for 4275 Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> okay, 4,275. So what are they gonna do for the website, Alan? <laughs> um, work with the Chamber of Commerce and, uh, and work for sponsors. <coughs> okay. Which is what every other town does. Makes sense. Um, Okay, so we have some time. Uh, Mary Margaret, do you want to? Sure, we can start. Um, so we're going to do the rec and rink budgets, which are way in the back on uh, page 181. <laughs> and Gloria gave you all new budgets. Almost nothing matches what's in the what came in the book originally. So she can them out tonight, so did they get them? All right, so if we start with uh, recreation, if you look at the um, line item 5102, wages, salaries, and wages temp, the increase is due to the increase in minimum wage. 
And if you look at salaries, this is at the very top, salaries and wages, um, <coughs> part of that increase is due to uh, shifting the percent that's paid from the rack, shifting from the rink to the rack. Okay, so travel basketball, 528-925 under fall programs. That $50,000 is mostly for the custodian. And then on line item 5299 where it says credit card processing, it used to be credit card processing and custodian. So that is part of the decrease. Okay, so the, that money's been moved up to the travel basketball, or 25000 of it. Right. Um, so also, health insurance has gone up. If you look at line item 5706. Yeah. And the other thing I found out that I did not know is they, are, they meaning Rec and Rink, are still um, paying health insurance for four retired people. Um, so that's a burden of $150,000 right there. Wow. So I mean, they earned it, they worked the time to earn it, but yeah. it's just, it's a heavy burden on an enterprise fund. Um, let's see what else did I wanna say about. All right, so if you then look at the revenues, Again, on line for reservoir line item 428911, they are raising the fees, the res fees, to help cover the increase in minimum wage. The, um, and the line just above that, the summer programs, there are more summer, more summer programs. And if you look at basketball, I mean, at the fall program, I'm sorry. The reason why there was that difference from 65,000 to 35,000 in revenue is because a lot of it was taken out into a separate item <coughs> for um, travel basketball. And the same is true for the winter program. So to more accurately reflect from where the revenue comes. Okay, so um, you all had asked me to ask if they were going to replace the Spy Pond benches. If they have funds available in the spring, they will. Um, th and there, then there's the issue of the jibs, the jibs, the jibs, Jim. <laughs> um, given that right now, that the gym is rented from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and they, it brings in annually about $220,000 net cash, according to Joe. So that would be a nice thing to still have and is there gonna be an issue, you know, depending on what we do with um, all the folks at, at the Gibbs. Um, so there, they have basketball, they have birthday parties there, Leslie Ellis is there, there's Pop Warner cheerleading, and they really need the Gibbs for programs. However, um, what they're hoping is that they have two rooms for the preschool that they could keep as the preschool, and then um, use the gym when it, if it's, if it's gonna be a school in the after school times be renting out the gym or using it for their programs. So, I mean, that I just bring that up as it's an issue to think about when, where does that revenue go if it totally becomes the school. And also the fund balances for June 30th for the rec were 210,478. What was the date on that? June 30th, last year, <coughs> last calendar year. <coughs> so I am recommending this budget as presented 
with the total expenses of $680,023, total revenues of $681,660, with positive revenue of $1,637. Okay. It was good to have a surplus. Yes. He works hard to make sure that happens. Okay, so is that your motion? Yes. Okay, second? Okay. A discussion. Brian. Um, I have the insurance budget, um, and um, they gave us a schedule of offsets, which include the REC, Ed Burns, Arena, and um, this was revised with the new numbers mm -hmm. for the health insurance, and it's 51,932. Well, I have to tell you, this is what Sandy gave me last week. Well, so, skate and, Sandy, and Sandy gave me this one as so well. So, <laughs> you know, I d can't help you there. Okay, so you're basically... Is that what you had for, for just the rink was the 52? No, I recreation is... I mean, just the here, you can, take a, you can take a look at it. Right there. And that's what's in the insurance budget, that's why. 51,932. Um, you know, that wasn't even in the right one from the previous redo. That looks like what was in there. Well, this was, this, th this is what they told us. This was yeah. with the updated numbers. Well, for whatever it's worth. I don't know. I don't know how to solve that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I said it first, so. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. It'll just, it'll, it, it, at the end of the day, they'll have more of a surplus. Right. Right. No, that's, that's, if we vote this the way it is. I'll, I'll, I'll. I have to resolve this. Okay. And there may be some tweaking, and that we have a motion to do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, Mary Margaret, you have sixty thousand five nineteen, and Brian, you've got fifty one nine thirty two. And both. And what's interesting is both pages came from Sandy Pooler. Yeah. I mean, he sent them to me. Which one is the most? I think this was. I think we, uh, I think the one that Okay, um, tell you what, let's discuss the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> we can vote it, and then you two straighten it out with Sandy. <laughs> and, you know, if we need to make a change, we can go back and make a change. Yeah, and I, looking at this, this that number looks like the number that was in the original um, rec health insurance, but it's been changed twice since then. So what this is the other one. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I, I understand. Um, yeah. Okay. But, I so. mean, none of these spreadsheets are linked together. They have no relationship to each other, except when you remember to type the same number in four different Well, you know, it's the same issue that we have with water. Yeah. Okay. So we can move on. Oh, I'm sorry. We can move okay. On. Let's let's do recreation. Oh. Okay. Um, oh, and again, I I uh, ask that you. Give a call to Sandy and, and find out what the discrepancy is. And okay. uh, if we have to come back, you know, just really only have to change a couple of numbers uh, right. and do that. So, any other questions on, any questions on recreation? That was easy. The only question threw a monkey wrench into the whole thing. <laughs> uh, Okay, why don't we, like, like Brian said, it could, it, it, if it's this way, it's, we still got a surplus. If, if Brian's, if the other numbers are correct, we got a bigger surplus. Right. So uh, it, it's not like it's, and it's an enterprise fund, so it's not like it's going to affect the bottom line of the budgets. Uh, so are there any other questions on recreation? Okay, right now the recommendation is for 680.023 expenses. 681, 660 on revenues, surplus of 1,637, which might get bigger. Yep. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 28. Okay, uh, rank. Yep, page 189. Well, it's page 189 here, but it's just a handout from today, that you got today, tonight.
Yeah, there's yeah, there's plenty of changes again. All right, so <coughs> again with the line item five one oh two salary and wages temp. That increase is due to minimum wage, the increase from last year to this year or next year. Looking at <coughs> if we're looking at expenses. In line item five two one one. Um, well actually let me do five two oh eight, the, the DCR lease payment. That extra amount is due to extra revenue. You have to pay a percentage. The way the lease is written, you have to pay a percentage of the revenue. And because we got more revenue, we have to pay more on the lease payment fee. All right, the energy's gone up mostly because the cost of electricity has gone up. Um, if you look at item 5299, otherwise unclassified, you see it's not there anymore because it was the payment for the software lease and now they, it's included in the kid care program. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I'm sorry. The otherwise unclassified used to be the software lease. Okay. Oh wait, now in the kid, wait a second. Anyway, I'll have to find that in a second. What I did with that. Well, what I wrote down was otherwise unclassified used to be in <coughs> used to be the software lease, and it's that expense is now in the child care program. Okay, now the health insurance here is 63,598. Is that what it is in? Nope. <laughs> 52,624, but let's just do the same what thing. What is it? 52,624. You know what? I think they're reversed. So, um, but I will, I'll still ask them. All right, it's, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to stay, say about expenses. Um, Nothing more to expenses. If you look at revenue, most of the programs are increasing and driving more revenue. There seems to be, with the concession stand and vending machine, there seems to be a declining interest in food. And they can't explain that, whether people are bringing more of their own food, but whatever, they've been watching that, that revenue decline. Um, and also the revenue from marketing declined, mostly because Hollaback and Coughlin are gone and they were a big um, advertiser in the rink. So that's basically all I have to say about the expenses. The fund balance in June was $79,021, 79021 So. Okay, questions? Obviously, we still have the same issue with the, the health insurance. With the health yeah. insurance. <coughs> John? Yeah, just one. Um, uh, how come nothing shows for the DCR lease payment in prior years? Because um, it must have been, I'm assuming it was included in wherever they used to put it. They, well, let's see. They, did they do? I don't remember. I didn't ask them because I don't remember where they used to put it. But it, because it got, it was significant because of the increase in revenue. And I think they just, you know, they have, they pay the payments every, you know, they've been paying lease payments all the time. But this one just got big because of the revenue. But I can ask them where. Wasn't that the January market? What? Wasn't that the January market? Was it just? when the payment started, 
we had to do some kind of shuffling in the budget last year. Yes. And then show up here. Yeah. Was it last year? I thought it was the year before. But whatever, yes. And um, I mean, we have to, we're constantly doing things to fix up the rink to accommodate the contract. But because there was a significant increase in revenue, there was an increase in the percentage of the fee we have to pay to them. So is this the total amount that's for the lease payment, or is this the addition because of the increase in revenues? In other words, yeah, is, it, is, it, is the bulk of it still somewhere else, or or did they pull I, the whole thing out? I think that this is just what they have to pay. Because, but let me, I have to ask that because I don't remember what year we had to make those extra payments and when we had to start paying them back. Because the contract was, we would fix up the rink for them, but they also mandated what we had to fix and when, and then we thought that the contract started when it was signed, but it actually started when we first started negotiating it, so, and there was a big lag between negotiation and signing, and it was when the other, the previous time manager. Yeah, I, I don't remember. So, I will ask, since I have to ask about health insurance, I'll ask him again if it's, if this is solely it, and if there's well, anything else. I, I thought, when we, when we talked about this at the time, when we took the radio, and I think you're right, the majority, of what we paying, what I call quote unquote rent, was the capital improvement that we were required right. to make on the building, which is like, I thought it was like a million people. It was, it was a, a lot, it was a lot of money. a lot of money. Yeah. And then last year, if I recall, there was this sort of incremental amount, I thought it was like $10,000 a year that they didn't think they had to start paying until this year, and we had to start paying last year. Right. And so I forget how we, we bridged that funding gap. We either transferred money there, we did something, mm -hmm. and then this year it's like the payments don't okay. start in full, whether it's a percentage of sales over a threshold or something like that. Right. But I think we've always brought in the understanding that it's never going to be big money. I, mean, I thought we were talking like 10 to 15 thousand. Right. So I'll ask. Okay, so I, th I think that sounds yeah, that's right. Good. That sounds Are right. So there was a really long lag time, like almost a year between the way when we took it on and when we physically signed it. Yeah. And they signed it back. I guess maybe that was it. Okay. So maybe this is just the first payment. Okay. Could you check on that mm -hmm. and get back to us on Wednesday? Okay. Other questions? Do I have a motion? I move as printed. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? So we're looking at these numbers, 641, 944 expenses, 642, 640 for revenues, surplus of $700, which of course in a weird way is in parentheses. Right. Uh, and then if the health insurance number tends, turns out to be the other number, we'll simply reduce those and uh, and Mary Margaret will get back to us on if this was the first lease payment mm -hmm. to the state. Well, yeah, just because I do think we, I should note it is um, if I remember correctly on the revenue, the first line item is actually coming from the general fund, so the rent continues to run a pretty decent size annual deficit. Because if, if you recall, they can cover their operating expenses, but they can't cover the capital expenses, so we transfer in 83 grand to then send to the capital budget. That's right. Yep. Okay, any other questions? So yes, so Carolyn. Given, given what Jean just said, do any of our buildings are they capable of covering the capital costs? Uh, well, the only ones you concern yourself with are the recreation, because those are the uh, uh, cause those are the enterprise funds. Everybody else is under the uh, you know uh, general fund. Uh, and, uh, I mean, obviously water and sewer raises their own, so they take care of their capital. Recreation really doesn't need to very much. Uh, AYCC. AYCC doesn't need to, and uh, Council on Aging doesn't need to. So it's really the rink is, is the one exception. But the, but the rink is the one we have a problem with 
because ECR hits us twice. Because right. first, first they made us do all these improvements and we didn't lose the rent. But then they cap what we can charge in That's user right. fees. So if we right. can't raise, even if we want it, we can't raise the revenue to cover the debt service. Right. That's right. So we had to make a decision several years ago. Do we want to keep a rank or do we not want to keep a rank? Uh, yes, everybody said. I mean, our guys didn't make it to the Super 8 this year, but they almost did. <laughs> okay, are there any other questions? Okay, uh, all those in favor of the uh, 700 surplus? Yes, we do. Uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and then we'll uh, marry Margaret again. If we can get back to you on Wednesday mm -hmm. on those two issues. Unanimous. Okay, so that takes care of those two. And right now we have a proclamation. So are they here, Glory? There you are. <laughs> Okay, so welcome. So good evening, everybody. While Al is handing out the um, handouts that we brought, we'll just introduce ourselves. My name is Linda Hansen. I'm a teacher in town here and the president of the Arlington Education Association. I'm Chris Hansen, Anthony. I'm the budget chair of the school committee this year. And last year, Kirsty and I um, undertook the project of trying to help educate people on the work of the Foundation <coughs> Budget Review Commission to help people understand how the state is funding education and some work maybe that um, they could do to improve the funding of education. And so what we're here to talk to you about tonight is um, state funding for education and how the current level of funding is <coughs> inadequate to the need and to, pro to provide some information to help you understand the work done by this legislative commission to attempt to quantify uh, the discrepancy. And we have it on good authority that you prefer short presentations, so this will be very <laughs> short. Um, it was 25 slides, we're down to nine. Um, so really we're trying to give you some background information that we hope will help you um, come to the decision to support the resolution um, that Mr. Tosti just mentioned. So we need to start out with just really briefly, what is the foundation budget? The foundation budget really is just a way that the state tries to determine what an appropriate level of funding is um, to provide adequate education for all of our students. And once they've done that, there's another series of calculations <coughs> that they perform to figure out what share of that base level of money should be um, spent by the town and what share by the state. So um, for the last seven years, we've been trying to push through a bill that would um, create a commission to really review the way that the foundation budget is established. And that finally happened last year um, as part of the FY15 state budget process. So the purpose of this review commission was to determine the educational programs and services necessary to achieve the Commonwealth's educational goals to review the way the foundation budgets are calculated and make recommendations for potential changes. And really, and most importantly, I think to review the changes in education over the last 20 years and the services necessary to prepare, prepare students to achieve passing scores on the MCAS, but really to prepare students to meet our state standards, including our graduation requirements. So the foundation budget was first created in the 1993 um, State Education Reform Act. And so it's been more than 20 years since it's been seriously um, reconsidered. And the idea uh, in establishing this commission was to update the formula to meet the needs of the 21st century. <coughs> One of the main things um, under discovery or under kind of that they were reviewing was this thing called the achievement gap. The realization that it costs a lot more money to educate students who have English as a second language, um, have learning disabilities and children that come from a low income background than it does to educate students of middle and high income, um, from middle and high income communities that don't have any of these other factors and that schools with large numbers of these, um, what they're called high-need students, 
would need a lot more money to reach the same level of achievement um, as middle and higher income students. So the four major factors that the Foundation Budget Review Commission considered were health insurance, special education related costs, um, costs related to students that have English as a second language, and the additional costs um, needed to bring low income students up to the same level as everybody else. So Linda left me kind of the easy part, which is the findings, because I think most people can kind of guess where the findings are going to end up. For health insurance, costs of are significantly underestimated in the foundation budget. For special, ed special education, costs are significantly underestimated because districts have more students in special education than the foundation budget estimates, and because the districts spend significantly over foundation budget estimates in out-of-district tuition costs. And finally, in ELL, they found a high variance of costs depending whether you're educating elementary, middle, or high school. Um, secondary student levels were especially underestimated. <coughs> so the recommendations followed from their findings. Health insurance, they recommended that we increase the amount for health insurance. Special education, they recommended to increase the assumption for special in-district special education enrollment and also increase the out-of-district out special education cost rate. For ELL, they recommended increasing the increment for all grade levels to the middle school level. And for <coughs> low income, they recommended increasing the increment in districts that had uh, high concentrations of low income students. So if you go and take these estimates and look at what the difference would be in Arlington, um, we looked at what the DESE, DESE had pulled together the estimates from the projection of the report. And using those numbers, um, if they use the new formula, for, we would receive additional Chapter 70 money um, to meet this, these new requirements, 3498000 um, we'd get an extra 110000 for ELL funding. Um, it's not clear if any of the low income <coughs> increment changes would affect us because we aren't a high concentration district, but the total increase would be approximately $3.6 million. And that's on top of the $10.7 million that we re currently receive in Chapter 70 funds, so it's a significant difference. Um, so going on to the next steps, um, what we're trying to do is to push the budget, what we and a lot of other school committees and towns around the, dis around the state are trying to do is to push the legislature to fully fund the recommendations of the FBRC report. Um, to do this, the Suburban Coalition began a, chap a resolution. It, the title is Chapter 70 Resolution, but it's about the foundation budget. We didn't print that out for you. I had, had it forwarded to all of you a few days ago. Um, but it basically goes into a lot of these things and <coughs> as is, and then the recommendation in the resolution part is to fully fund the foundation budget recommendations. Um, to date, uh, as of yesterday, 17 Board of Selectmen, 11 FinComs, and 64 school committees have passed this resolution across the state. So, any questions? Carolyn? Did you do the work to figure this out, or did somebody else? Work to figure what out? The, the numbers. Uh, I took the numbers from the estimates that Desi had provided um, after the initial report came out. The preliminary report, Desi ran calculations, and I was able to obtain a copy of that and looked at what Arlington's were. Paul? I assume this is affecting virtually every city and town in the state? And to different degrees, but yes. So, to the issue of different degrees, how does Arlington stand generally? Better than average, worse than average? Um, I've done some preliminary analysis. I have to go back and, and cross-check that, so you have to take these with a grain of salt. But we ran, I took everybody, calculated the percent, the increase that they would see versus the amount that they currently get, um, and then rank them by that percentage. We're around 11, 12 percent uh, percentile, so we're near the top, but we're not in the top. What was interesting was Seven or eight of our 12 com comparable towns were also in that, and they were all, actually most of them were higher than us. So it's, 
the factors that we've chosen for to make our comparable set somehow are affecting what Chapter 70 money we're getting. And so for our comparable towns, it's really important to pass this. And what would the total cost statewide be to implement this? About $500 million. For, for, the, for the two major recommendations that came out as kind of the top two things that the, the Foundation Budget Review Commission thought should be funded initially. Thank you. And what was that number again? 500 million. Okay, okay Alan and Dean. Um, for the uh, benefit of the millions of viewers at home, c could you just summarize a little bit about how Chapter 70 is calculated, what factors go into the number? Well, so basically, so and how it relates to the foundation budget. Are you interested in that as well? So basically, the foundation budget is how much money the state thinks um, should be provided for students to meet an adequate level of education, educational outcome. And then Chapter 70 looks at the relative wealth of a community, basically, and uh, as well as other factors. Yeah, to determine, again, what the split should be. Yeah, Chapter 70 looks at, to determine relative wealth, they look at the total value of property in your town, and does it, income. does it use income? I think, I think it uses income. Okay. They modified that a few years ago. Okay, yeah. Um, it's it, very complicated. <laughs> is there currently a differentiator that, um, let's say, uh, that, that differentiates between uh, students on IEPs, ELL students, and uh, others? Uh, that, that falls into the f foundation budget calculations, and yes, there is currently, um, they're done in different, there are some changes in how those calculations are done um, in, that are proposed in the foundation budget um, report, um, but there are different amounts. No. But they were found to be inadequate and, and needed updating, basically. I mean, it, it, it seems like uh, the cost of uh, special education is increasing faster than the cost of general education. <coughs> and I'm wondering if that's taken into account so that a, a town that has a higher percentage of people, uh, of students, uh, special education programs, get a proportionally increase uh, in aid. Or, or if this would change that okay. or improve that situation. Um, they don't look so much at how many students you actually have in special education. They make the blanket assumption that all towns have the same percentage of in-district and out-of-district students. Um, it, for out-of-districts, they assume 1%. Mm -hmm. For in-districts, I'm not... 15. Oh yeah, that's right, it went from 15 to 16. That, that was the... So well, it's more a state so average. It, they look at the state average, but they don't then go and say, does, does your town actually reach that? And that, so one of the 25 slides that we dropped was the issues that we have with the report. This is one of the things they didn't pick up and we think it would be important for Arlington, but at this point, just getting their recommendations would make a big difference. And that's, you were sort of going where I was going. We, we you know, we, we're, we're looking for the state to take more responsibility for children who need uh, more expensive education. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering it, how, to what extent this, this, these recommendations address that. We were disappointed that that was not addressed. As fully as we as would like to. Yeah. Yeah. Some movement in the right direction, but it didn't go all the way there. Yeah. Dean? So we, we seem to be fighting this over a decades long battle with the legislature, who um, <clears throat> for some reason just has decided that general government aid and Chapter 70 are, I guess, are not their responsibility unless they, you know, feel generous enough to give us whatever they want to give us. Um, do you have any thought, since you've been involved in this, why they, frankly, just don't care? Like, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I look from our own state aid perspective when we combine these, and there's some years it goes up 1%, there's some years it goes years, I mean, three, four years, I think it went down. Is there any, like, reason that they, you don't feel that, that we, we think at the legislative level they don't have any urgency on issues like this? on fully funding schools to the level that... Just in general, yeah. 
have some ideas. Honestly, I guess the politic answer is there are always more needs than they have money for. But really, I think you know if you if you kind of follow the data, what it shows is there's an erosion of state money towards all of the services, and over time, there's now less money that go towards you know education funding, for instance, than there was 10 years ago. And there doesn't seem to be a large appetite or large enough appetite to say we need more revenue in order to fully fund the things that we say we should do. I'd, I'd agree with what Linda said, but also point out that there's a lot of towns that don't have nearly the problems that we do, um, that don't have as high concentrations of either out of district special education students or um, so they're not as poorly served by the cor current formula and not, if they don't, I think, see the same difficulties. And so their legislature don't, aren't getting the same message that we're giving ours, that we're really hurting. Um, I'm not sure that they're hurting quite as much. I think one other thing I want to add about school funding in particular is that <coughs> so you have the foundation budget that's split between the town and the state, and then towns can add on top of that if they want to through property taxes, you know, an additional amount. And I think a, what you've seen for sure since Prop 2 and a half is that wealthier towns have added more and more local property taxes to offset the state funding being pulled away. So it's really creating a less equitable distribution of funding of school systems and you know Arlington's in a tough spot because we don't necessarily have the capacity to continue to raise the money through property taxes whether or not that's a good way to do it I don't know like this is you know this is more towards saying that's really the state responsibility to be picking up more of the tab for for funding I think that is one of the things we've seen so that relieves some of the pressure like Percy was saying on the legislature to, to fix it at the state level because municipalities are making it up at the, you know, through property tax increases. Do you have any ideas? <laughs> no, I mean, I just, you know, because when, when I was sort of looking into this, I mean, I was, um, I mean, I know we've talked to the finance committee a lot about, um, about issues with local aid and, and Chapter 70 and things like that, and I think what shocked me is if you go back to 2010, I mean, there were years where the state budget was going up five, six percent. Like, I mean, you flip it along. And then you look at the local aid numbers, and I never, I mean, I know when we were getting large and they were just really bad, I never correlated to what the state budget was going up until I started looking into this. It was, it was appalling. I mean, you know, we were just flipping along at the same level as the state budget. We'd be doing great. Well, it'd be great. We'd be a lot better than we're, we're doing now. But it seems like you're in this scenario where, at least the way I look at it, when I was comparing it and benchmarking it, where if the state budget goes up a lot, we go up a little. If the state budget goes up a little, we go down. And that's just, like, that's just terrible at that point. So, but I, I do thank you for, I do want to say that as an editorial, I do thank you for for doing this work and looking into this, because I think the one thing that um, is a little, I think, frustrating is I do feel in some ways the legislature has just worn people out. I mean, like back in 2002, 2003, 2004, we got some of those big cuts that came through. It was like people were angry and mad and like had motivation to send letters and, and, and lobby legislature and stuff like that. But I think over the course of a decade, they've just worn people down into believing that, you know, that it's okay, like you said, to not fund this stuff and then, you know, well, the taxpayers will just have to make it up and overrides and stuff like that, which, you know, and I think we have to sort of send, have some discussion that that's just not a long-term, <coughs> just not a viable solution long-term, so. And I would like to say maybe in closing that, you know, I think a lot of us who were paying attention were really excited that this commission finally got <coughs> off the ground. It got created by an act of the legislature. They did good work. They came up with reasonable conclusions. But in order for this not to be just a re another report that sits on a shelf, we really need to build the political will to put this into action. It would make a big difference for Arlington. Three and a half million extra dollars a year would make a big difference. So we're asking for you to please consider um, passing a resolution. And 
Thank you for your time. Paul, well, you're not getting one yet. Oh, <laughs> I'll stay here all night. <laughs> Did you, do you happen to know what the number would be for Minuteman? How much they would <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can do our homework on that one. Yeah. Because that, that affects our town budget too. So. Mm -hmm. David? Uh, um, as a former member of the Allen School Committee, this discussion has been going on for as long as I, I was on the school committee. I've been off the school committee for over 13 years. Um, part of the problem is that under the special ed, the special is a mandated program by an act of legislature, but it was unfunded. Right. That's number one. That's right. And you're right. Towns such as Allenton have been left to determine if they need more money to go to the voters rather than so the, the chapter 70 money is less for a town like Allington in a sense, well, they're, they're, for lack of a better term, they're wealthy enough to go to the voters. And, that, and that's been an argument. Um, they, and they base it on <coughs> property values, medium income, <coughs> an array of, of different things. But the discussion has been around for a long time. But I'm very glad that the legislature finally has come up with this committee. And, and, and the committee has come back and said, look, this is what communities need. That's taken a long time to do. Yeah, it has. Seven years it's been talked about. So just to get it out of committee and get a vote on it to actually create the commission. So, And it, it was supposed to be happening every year from when the, 1993. In, for 1993, so. That's right. John? I guess I don't quite understand what you're asking us to do. Are you asking the finance committee to create a resolution? No, yeah, the proclamation. So that was handed out, I think, a week or two ago. Oh, to support the project. The 16th. Thank you. Yeah, so that looks the same as this, right? I don't think. So that looks a little different. That's the one you gave us. That's one. Here's the signature. Oh, you've already handed it out. Yeah. He does the signatures on the back. Okay, wait, I forwarded one. So, Gloria, I've got one here. So, John, to answer you, there's also a resolution that school committees, finance committees, and um, board of selectmen have signed. So we can make sure that you have a copy of this as well. So the ask was to sign on to this resolution and become another body that's endorsing the resolution that basically just asks um, the legislature to fully fund the work of the Foundation Budget Review Commission. That's the ask. Uh, okay. So this is what. The chairman handed out when the school committee was here a week and a half right. ago. That's that's a different thing. This is separate from this was totally separate from the school committee budget presentation. I so know that, but he handed out the proclamation. Well, but I think isn't that too? Yeah. Is that? Huh. This was the one signed by the board of selectmen. Oh. I mean, I think it's the same information. It just is in a slightly different form. Um, okay, you sent this out by email? I thought so. I'll double check that. I... Yeah, it was sent today. Yeah. I, I've seen that new version. You've seen this. Gloria sent it to us on March 24th. Yeah. Oh, they thought you might want to read it beforehand. Oh, well, I thought this was it. Okay. Uh, other questions? Brian. Um, I assume you've spoken to our state reps, and I'm curious to what they've told <laughs> They came and met at school committee and heard a lot about this. Unfortunately, I was sick that day, so I wasn't in on that conversation, but they've been hearing it from us both in person and by email. They, and they're all in favor of it. I was there. I watched it on TV. I forget. They are all in favor of it. There was this idea that maybe they fund 25% of it a year. So instead of doing it all at once, maybe 25% a year, you know, adding up to 100% over a couple of years. So that was basically what they were saying was probably the most feasible thing to do. But they said they would follow up with it? They said they're in support of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? The, um, okay, two questions. Where do you expect that they're going to come up with $500 million? Because <laughs> I have an idea where they might come, come, where it might come from, but. Certainly, I've been wondering if they would just decrease the unrestricted government aid. And 
but so that that is a concern um, with the talk about how important that is it's hard to see how they could do you know talk about how important it is for towns that have unrestricted aid and de simultaneously decrease it the other thing is if um, in 2018 the millionaire fair share tax passes that would be $2 billion, $2 billion dollars annually um, through the millionaire fair share tax increase. That would be one way to raise revenue, and it's supposed to all be targeted at education and uh, public education and transportation. So that would fully fund it basically right there. Um, other questions? Because that would be my big fear. Yes, no, they I just agree. depend on unrestricted. Okay, any other questions on this? Okay, well thank you very much for coming, we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, take care. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I just got this and figured this is what we were dealing with, so. Um, why don't everybody take a look at this, the full, the, the memo on March 24th. That was what it, yeah. Yeah, Okay, why well, doesn't everybody take a look at the March 24th email and see what you think, because it, it seems to me I might have skimmed it and it looked like it did talk about. They're materially the same. I mean, there's the, the Board of Selectmen put their own touches by adding the word and a whole bunch of time after each one. And then they decided to put their own names at the beginning of the second page. Yeah. Well, actually, they put the Board of Selectmen on it. But otherwise, and then that one we got has a, a, some commentary on it. But they're not, they're not wildly different. OK. Uh, Okay, so uh, if you can take a look at it, then Wednesday we'll <coughs> discuss it and vote on it. it it's, uh, it, it, you wonder sometimes how, how much this does, because, you know, you can go to our local reps and they're good people and they'll, but, you know, the, the chair of House Ways and Means says, ain't no way we can afford this, and, uh, uh, unfortunately, sort of beating your head against the wall. Um, Okay, those were our two hearings. So let's get back to budgets, um, insurance. Okay. So I uh, guess the first question I, I want to be sure that everybody has the most up-to-date final uh, group health insurance budget. And the best way to look at this is on the, uh, the total change in the bottom right hand corner, it should say 3.45%. If it doesn't say that, I have extra copies. You raise your hand, I can talk about you. I'm sorry, what was the, this is the total increase? Yeah, so just so we can differentiate it from uh, yep. a bunch of sheets that have been um, replaced, uh, I should say 3.45% overall change. Okay, so we take the original and which was 3.29. Correct. And we take the second draft, which was 3.33. Yes. And we toss those, and we go with 3.45. Correct. Okay. Does anybody need a copy of this? No. Gloria handed them out. Okay. Yeah, Gloria handed them out. Okay, great. She killed, how many trees? One. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just added two more <laughs> trees. <laughs> There you go. So uh, the uh, FinCom Finance Subcommittee composed of myself and Brian, <coughs> Brian Caroline, and uh, Charlie met with Karen Malloy, head of uh, Human Resources, and uh, Sandy uh, Pooler. And um, what I thought I'd do is if you take a look at some of the changes, is maybe just hit upon uh, a couple of that are kind of the main drivers, if you will, of, of the budget uh, that they're seeking to have approved. So if we go to line 5704, which is insurance, group health, that's the GIC, and the request should read uh, 15,105,907, which is a 4.64% uh, increase from last year's budget. So the main drivers uh, of this line basically uh, are changes and most generally an increase in overall insurance premiums. And uh, 
there are 43 plans that the, the group insurance contract works with. And each one of these has their own increase or decrease. And then each one of these plans has so many employees that uh, pick plan A with Fallon, plan B with uh, Harvard Pilgrim. So it's very hard to come up with if somebody says, what is the, you know, what is the increase in premium for this year? Um, but the best way to figure that out, if you, if you want to, is to uh, go to um, page four. And page four really breaks down in detail each of the insurance <coughs> companies and their premiums. The fourth page? Page four, right? In the corner, Ah, I'm clever. That's seven, six. Should be a little so circle. Looks, looks like this. And for, for more specific, more specifically, if you look at page seven, and these are the rate changes for individuals and families listed by health care provider. So um, not that we need to go into this right now, but it, it just um, gives you a flavor for what <coughs> drives the uh, request. And that's one of the reasons. And the other one is basically when there's a change in number of employees. So for example, in the coming year, there will be 17 new teachers and three other new town employees. And uh, these are both uh, budgetary factors <coughs> that increase this line. Uh, there's also been an increase, um, an addition of another contractor within the uh, GIC, Harvard HMO. And that is going to service up to 30 contracts. So it's increasingly growing. There's new growth, there's expansion within the teachers, staff, and employees, and then there's increases in the um, increases in the premium uh, rates themselves. Uh, by contrast, if you look at what the uh, budget was last year in comparison to the year before, 2016 to 15, it was a 10.8 percent increase. And uh, the year before that, it was 2.1. So it's, it's kind of all over the board. But the thing is that I found impressive about our meeting is that uh, Karen and Sandy really are very meticulous and very complete in uh, providing us uh, detailed information about what goes into coming up with a request. Um, the other one that I want to mention is uh, the uh, Employee Health Mitigation Fund. There's a drop there of 200,000, that's the change. There's actually no request for, for year 2017. And the reason is, is simply that the goal was to get up to um, $1 million. And they accomplished that, so hence there's no, uh, no additional request for this year. Now that 20 million, is that like for all the cities and towns or? The 20, you said 20, you've reached a certain sum. No, one million. One million. One million. One million. One million. Okay. That was part of, that was part of uh, the plan to make, uh, to help entice the, the uh, town employees to go to the GIC, was the, the setting up of that fund. Right. And to help pay for their out-of-pocket costs. And that, that still exists, so it's on a first-come, first-served basis, and um, that incentive seems to be working pretty well. There are ones that want to opt out. You know, I won't go into the details of that, but if we can talk about that if you want. The opt-out program is really what it costs the town of Arlington uh, if a employee decides to go to a plan outside of the, of the GIC. 
and it could be coming to become part of their spouse's plan if it offered a good deal. Uh, but the cost um, for one of these plans to the town is ten to twelve thousand dollars, you know, per employee. So they pay one to two thousand dollars for somebody who opts out of the plan, and uh, it really makes good economic sense, even if it doesn't sound like it does. Because at the end of the day, they uh, they're able to save quite a bit of money. So I'm just going to drop down to the request, which is a 3.45% request, percent request uh, for 2017, and a budget of uh, $15,894,742. And uh, put that out for a vote. If anybody has more questions, uh, I'll try to answer them for you. OK, so if you could, could you go into the opt-out again? So do we pay them a lump sum, and then they, they leave for a certain number of years, or? They get an annual fee, of, a fee. they get an annual stipend of $2,000 a year if they're single, 4,000 if they're married. Okay. And they get, it, they get it every year, so long as they don't take part in uh, the town's health insurance programs. So we pay four, so we pay, pay we pay, we've, If they're married, we pay them $4,000 a year, or the option would be if they'd be on a family plan, which could cost us 15,000 a year. So. Yep. Again, it's more it was more enticement um, to get everybody to come over to the GIC originally. So, and, they, and they will continue it because it obviously saves the town money. Yep. Okay, Carolyn? If I remember correctly, that is no longer offered to new employees. Right. It's only offered Correct. to the employees who were on previous plans and are now, have now switched to the GIC. Well, okay. if somebody's from the GIC, it's not that they have just switched to the GIC, it's they choose not to switch to the GIC right. and right. they went on to someone else's plan. Correct. Right. But it was only people who were employed at that time. Right. So that was, that was negotiated through the individual contracts. It started with the stacks, it started with the people. Okay, so you can see there's still a budget uh, right. for that, as there may be somebody in the future that wants to opt out. Absolutely. And then go on to the spouse's plan, because it's a better view of the cross blue shield, whatever. Yes. Okay, questions? Obviously, this is a, a big ticket item. And it seems so far that the GIC is still the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Uh, she did point out that they're now at the levels the insurance cost is now at the level that it was when we reverted to the GIC on the original savings. <coughs> so it's actually, caught, but, then, but theoretically, you know, if we had stayed on the other plan, it would probably be another $5 million a year mm -hmm. additional. Right. Yeah. Now, one thing that she mentioned also is that versus independent plans, the GIC typically has higher deductibles, and this in fact keeps the premiums lower. And the premium increases uh, also on the lower end. Um, when they go out to look for a new company, for example, the average is uh, the town pays 78% towards the total premium for an employee, and the employee pays the 22% remainder. Uh, this new, new uh, deal with the Harvard HMO, it's a 75-25 um, split. So the town saved a little money there. And uh, so I think they're really diligent on how they, how they run us. Other questions? John? Yeah, could you explain um, the, the third page, not page three, the, uh, uh -huh. doesn't have a page number on it, but the, the trust fund, the health claims trust fund? Uh, well, my understanding is there is still an, a health insurance trust fund that, that exists. From when we were self-insured? Correct. Okay. And even though there's no discussion, <coughs> there's no discussion at all right now about moving to a self-insured insurance model, uh, the thinking is, is that, you know, to start something like that off, you need significant funds. And that's a big reason why that uh, why the health insurance trust fund is um, just kind of sitting there. 
Um, so if there is a discussion in the future about moving back to self-insurance, they have a little bit of a head start. This is basically the town's money at this point. And if you look at the top of where it has a little, it has little captions there, 01, you'll see there's a $300,000 number. That was last year's contribution to the OPEB because that is basically taking care of the insurance for um, the retirees. So they are using it for that purpose, but at, technically, I believe, I'm not sure where, or how, they, how we actually get our hands on this fund, but it does belong to the town at this, at this juncture. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. Okay, do I? Uh... Lost chance. Now, do we also have next year? Yeah, there's a, a million dollars worth of other insurance right. items in, in the budget. Um, the liability indemnity unemployment workers club. That's another budget. Yeah, that was a different page. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's not part of this. That's a budget. Okay, so are you recommending fifteen million eight ninety four seven forty two? I am recommending that. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, Dean. Actually, can I ask a question? Maybe I'm not able to figure this out, but. On line 5704, the, well, the budgeted item, 14.4 million, where do you think that's going to come in for actual? Do you know? Do we have an estimate? 14 for this year. That's for this, this year. 2016. Right did we ask for that question? Uh, could you just repeat that, um, please, the question? On GL line 5704. Okay. Insurance group house. Budgeted FY16 number of 14.4 million. Correct. Do we know where we think that's going to come in? <coughs> Is it going to come in under? I mean, close to it. Well, I can say that um, every day we waited for the dick rates to come in, you're getting closer and closer. But um, I don't think there's any way to know exactly where you're going to end up. We still have what? Two more months to the end of this fiscal year, right? So it, it should be close. Do we know what they're running? It, well, I don't know what the I don't know what the dollar amount is, but I know the. She said that she's tracking the number of employee contracts, and that's not changing. The number of employees. contracts. The, the number because if you look, uh, we have con we must have nineteen hundred contracts. Okay, contracts meaning employees. Insurance. In, in employees, retirees. So, so subscribers to the insurance to, to the health insurance. Yeah. Subscribers. Hang on, do not is there an open en is there an open enrollment window uh, restricted dates? When do you change funding? Uh, there is. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But yeah. I have a list of that. There is for some employees. Here. In other words, if you are a current employee, you know, say for instance that you uh, now have decided to go into the GAC, there's an right. open period for that. Right. But a new employee. That's the first that's time. That's right there. Isn't it? That's open. The, right there so, on the info. So most of the contracts are set. On right. Well, okay, okay, wait a minute. Well, well, one, one, so one, one person at a time. Dean. So, so here's what I'm trying to get. So when I look at the insurance line and it says it's going up 4.64%. Okay, so my first instinct on that is I think, okay, we're adding more school employees, we're adding more, we're adding a couple more town employees in the police department. Three more town and, uh, and, and stuff like that. So it's really not a 4.64% correct premium. Correct. It's no. a budgetary no. increase, so it's a combination of headcount. Correct. That's correct. Why, so I that said, would make the premium increase even low, right? That's why I said there are two main drivers to this, one being the uh, premium rate increases for changes and also Increases in the number of contracts for employees that uh, come into the plant. Right. So then I go to page yeah. seven because that's the only place I can find the rates. And I don't have a breakdown by dollar. And except for the Harvard Building of Choice and the I'm making this up, Tells Tells Health Plan, everyone else is going up on more than four six four. 
And people are moving around into different plants. Yep. As, as people's rates rise, they're dropping into a cheaper plant. Oh, so it's a mix shift. Yes. Yeah. And so by the way, um, I'm not sure which page it is. Uh, in her, she has 30 new contracts coming in to the new year. So that she's added 30 contracts where she doesn't actually have the employees yet. That's the 283471? Yes. For new growth. Right. So, well, it could also well, be whether they change their plan. If their kids aren't covered anymore, they're not in right. the family plan. Except most families are keeping their kids on until they're 26. I know, but still, that could be one way, or they become single, so that who's being covered could also change. Right. Right. Okay, the uh, fluctuates. It's a moving target. Okay, so the numbers will have to be. Uh, we'll have to nail down still those differences on the. Uh, Enterprise funds, uh, well, as far as me. Alan's budget. Uh, I, th I think in terms of, we, are you talking uh, now, Al, about the offsets? Yeah, the ones okay. for Breck and Ray. So um, the offsets uh, on this budget, the 722-161, that is a revision from what it had been before. And the 722-161, that was the latest figure to come from Sandy. Right, but mine were the latest figures to come from <laughs> Sandy. Okay, well, so. <laughs> there's a down. <laughs> okay, so Mary Margaret, if, if, if you're, you, uh, I can go back. <laughs> you know, if if both you and maybe you, you guys could do a conference call with Sandy, just so you know you're both hearing the same thing, uh, so we could nail this down. Uh, you just jumped into this right. in late January, so you could understand why it's a little confusing. No. Uh, so if you two could get together and call directly and that way we'll get the same answer on that. Maybe. That's hard. Okay, now are you also making a recommendation on the liability or should we take that separately? Uh, I am. And on the liability page, I think uh, it looks good the way it is and if there are questions, we'll just... Uh... Okay, so that number is uh, in the original book of 1,045,000. One million four forty-five. Okay. Four point seven eight percent. And that's your recommendation. Uh, that's a recommendation. Uh, the only thing of significance, well, one thing of significance was uh, that the um, the prop, well, the property insurance has been leveled for three years, and the workman comp increase of fifty thousand is a result of uh, increase in rates, or stock rates. Okay, does anybody have any questions on the liability insurance? <coughs> Grant? I think I know the answer is a negatory one, but he, uh, Sandy provided a nice roadmap of the offsets for the previous budget. Did he do such a roadmap for the offset for the 20,000 here? It's a fair question. You know, it's interesting. We spent the time we had with them, probably ninety-five percent on the health insurance, and sure. so um, I can I can certainly find out for you if it's if he has it. Yeah, man. yeah, sure. I, I've stymied him with a few phone calls today. Too, so. <laughs> <laughs> that one looked like expecting me. Okay. Okay, so uh, are you making a motion on the group health insurance for fifteen million eight nine four seven four two? Yes. And on the liability for one million oh forty five. Correct. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, and you're going to get back to us on the um, the offset. The offsets and. You and you and Mary and Margaret will get back to us on the uh, uh, the rank and rec. and the rec. And I think I'm assuming Grant the 576 828 is what water and sewer is. Uh, yeah, that's the roadmap you're talking about for the general. Which yeah. page are you talking about? The big. Uh, there are some other discrepancies, small numbers that, that need to be cleaned up. The, the, these, I, th I believe the the, the seven twenty two one sixty one is the final number. Right. 
but those apportionments haven't trickled down to the other budgets yet. Okay. But they're small numbers. We're working on that. Okay, is there any further discussion? Well, so I think I finally figured it out. So if I go to page three. <laughs> this is on the handout? Yeah, I finally figured it out. <laughs> I knew, Dean, if we gave you enough time. <laughs> Stall for They're me. projecting this budget to come in 881000 under budget for the current year. If I look at this chart here. And it says FY16 appropriation of 15977, spending year to date 11178, and then they project out to 15097. So it's not a deficit. They don't project a deficit. It's not, but when we say we're going up 4.64%, we're probably going up more, we're just going up off of, it looks like it, it's this year's coming in under, so the next year's coming in slightly higher. Then it's higher than 464, they're just they're taking the surplus plus the growth rate to get where they're going, which I think makes more intuitive sense of what you expect health insurance to be when you add the rates in the, in the box. Okay. Good. That's good. Okay, any other discussion or questions? Okay, um, I'll just take one vote for both. So this will be 15, 894, 742 for the health insurance and 1 million 045 for the liability insurance. All those in favor of those, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 32816. Okay. Insurance is now done. Now we come to the last budget. And it is water and sewer. <coughs> so it is water and sewer. <laughs> <laughs> Always the last. <laughs> <laughs> Why was I going, being too subtle? <laughs> um, so, Sandy did in fact give us the uh, new budgets, and the numbers do in fact tie out to that offset sheet that we Alan just asked about. Of course, overall, I guess it's still a mystery, but <laughs> one of the budgets. Still You're caught up in the whole of the world. Yeah, right. Other than the unemployment <laughs> stuff, which Sandy's going to be backing up. Oh, so what we just hand these and, and, and pass them around. One of the things Sandy did on this, uh, according to Alan's suggestion, was he did, in fact, uh, put a date down at the bottom of it, because this happened to coincide with the budget I also got from the director of DPW, Mike Rademacher, and they were different. So <laughs> we elected to go with the most recent one with the date on the bottom of it. Uh, and that one includes the health insurance uh, offset. It's the only thing, the only thing changing between this and the book are the uh, indirect charges between retirement costs and the health benefits, which you know, we just covered. So, uh, Grant, if I could just interrupt. Alan, is the numbers in your budget the same as these new ones? Yes. Okay. I, I, I cheated. I got these a few days ago. Okay. <laughs> and insisted on having to put the date down on the bottom, <laughs> so we knew which one we're looking at. I probably got them on March 24th. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so this budget's pretty, pretty level set the whole way through. Um, there's not a whole lot of changes <coughs> in it. Uh, if we're taking a look at the sewer collection system, um, everything's pretty flat on this. Um, 
So the workman's comp cost and the unemployment compensation cost, uh, that's the question I have into, um, into Sandy. Um, they're the same every year, and you just know where they tie out to. They, um, the only thing to make difference about this one and the um, water distribution system and the indirect charges, they, they usually have 50-50 you know, of each one, except in this case, workman's comp and uh, unemployment compensation isn't. Again, we'll have Sandy uh, may make an impact about what they represent and why they're the same and how they tie into the rest of the budget, the rest of the town budget. Um, now the indirect costs, if you're taking a look at uh, still on indirect charges at uh, count 5903, the indirect cost, which is a, a, a non-PW admin offset. Uh, if you notice that increased, but that's uh, you know, within the margin. And also this is the, this is that algorithm, this is based on that algorithm that the, uh, Andrew Flanagan sent a memo out to Dean and myself about how they have uh, recommended allocations. Uh, and that's what they perform, so that's what the, the number comes out to be. I have a separate sheet on that if somebody wants, you know, the breakdown and, and how salary offsets and indirect costs are explained, but uh, they do, in fact, tie up. Uh, sewer costs, sewer collection expenses are the same. Um, you know, everything pretty much, <laughs> everything's pretty, pretty cut and dry on that. The, uh, I had asked Mike about the salary decrease in collection equal to the, uh, these two budgets go together. Sewer collection and the water distribution set, uh, system are usually, you know, tied together. So. Um, the salary and wages uh, decreased by a certain amount, but they were also offset, um, decreased again in water sewer properties. I know it's skipping around, but the budgets are tied together. Um, Mike's explanation on that was also uh, you know, based on the offset calculation. Salaries actually, uh, both salaries were decreased, as he said. Uh, so I don't have anything, any other notes on sewer collection. Um, let's see, how do we have on collection? Okay. I had had originally a question on collection retirement, but they have since adjusted that number, and that's reflected in the new budget. So. Um, so taking one at a time, Uh, I would propose uh, that we approve this budget for the total of, and I can't even read the bottom of the new one, but it looks like 625585. That's the subtotal. I'm sorry, repeat that once more. That's not even the subtotal. That's just a subtotal. That's just a subtotal. I can't even read the bottom of the last one, so I'll have to get the original one. Um, it's actually, it, it, I believe the number on the combined handout is there. It's, it's just hard to read. The total is 19,975. Right. Yeah, when I did the copying, it didn't. Okay, yeah, the uh, 19,975,567. Yeah, this page is pretty readable. The last page. Uh, oh, cool. All right, it's not broken. It's, it's a summary. Cool. Yeah, the summary yeah. at the bottom of the next to last page. Well, that's the total of the entire the entire budget. Right. Yeah, that's we the, can. That's the vote. Yeah, I think we can vote just the the bottom line, nineteen million nine seventy five five sixty seven, which is both the same revenue and expenditures coming out with no surplus. The rink is better. 
Well, uh, more than that, I'd also point out that there's 107,000 of retar user retain retained earnings that we haven't used for a couple of years, and those going to ask if we know what the balance is of the retained earnings. I was going to say, so I actually checked with the controller. Mike didn't have that. He said, I said I asked him that last year, but I didn't ask him that this year, so he didn't have it ready. So, so it's sort of lost 107,000, but then that balance by retained user retained, retained earnings. He estimated the balance is like four and a half mil. Yeah. Does that sound right? So we can. Okay, Grant, could you uh, go back to the controller or somebody and give me an exact yeah. fund balance as of uh, 6.30? Yeah. Okay. I, I, uh, again, I met with Mike this afternoon, so we didn't have a chance, to, this evening, so we didn't have a chance to ask uh, the controller, but I'll do it tomorrow. Are there any uh, new significant projects underway or? Well, the, uh, I guess part of the thing, so the uh, capital equipment, what they did this year is they bought a, um, mm -hmm. what did he buy this year with the capital equipment? <coughs> uh, bought a mini excavator this year. Last year they bought a truck. Um, the water meter replacement project, uh, they kind of hit a stall because they're having some issues with the uh, supplier. Uh, I think he uh, said due to programming issues that they need to be resolved by the vendor, uh, the meter reading replacement uh, got put on hold. So they're going to try and pick it up again next uh, next year once with this is all being resolved or in the upcoming year. Uh, so that's resuming the water meter replacement. The whole idea on that is to try and capture um, more accurately the amount of water usage. Uh, the major issue on Mike's radar uh, this year was, I guess, was it NIPS, NIP, NIPDES. Uh, there's some environmental uh, storm sewer, stormwater uh, permitting going on. Uh, it's going to, the oversight's going to increase, and that's going to increase um, Mike's concerns. That increases not only the testing of the water. Um, this is all storm sewer related, uh, but also if, it if we encounter any repair that has to be done, that could go it's very hard to predict the actual cost of repair. So while the, the testing amount, the money, the money required to do the testing is going to increase uh, because they have to, I guess, test 25% of, of the pipes annually. But then if they find any repairs, uh, that's just going to, it's just so hard to predict what it will cost to cover that. And the MWRA loans are probably not going to cover that because it's a different type of leak uh, in the storm system, storm sewers. They only really cover the sewer systems. Okay, questions? Alan? I, was, I think it was just last week, the uh, legislature appropriated a bunch of money for zero interest loans for lead pipe replacement. And it, it, it was all like a week ago. Is there any, was there any discussion of that? I, I believe Arlington was on the list of qualified borrowers. Hmm. I, I don't know if we have any lead pipe in town. You know, Mike spent a little bit of time explaining about the fiasco about Flint, and then he said that uh, we had no need to worry about anything about that in Arlington. Um, but he didn't mention anything about that. I always get nervous when he says that. <laughs> right, right. Well, it was interesting, uh, you know, Apparently, they had put an, an additional additive in there that, that took out part of the corrosive buildup, yeah. and that exposed the lead. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a two-part a two-part mistake on that. But uh, so I guess we're not putting any additive in there. But he didn't mention uh, didn't mention about that. I think if we have lead pipes, apparently there's some more zero interest loan money available. But right. it's probably too soon. But yeah. And that would be on the water. Yeah, I guess is he could certify or he could be rest assured that all the public pipes might be lead free. <clears throat> but then you got all the pipes that go from the, the, the middle of the street to your own house. Right. You know, and my house was built probably 1880. Yeah. Uh, 1988. You know, so any house constructed after 1980 was probably fine, but all those other houses, you know, they don't know what's in, I, I wonder if they know what's in there. No. I mean, I think that's what the loan program was specifically for, was the last mile. Right. Video. I'm sorry, Dick, you said? 
you look at your meter where you connect it to the street, where they connect it, you can tell if it's a lead or a copper. Okay, inside your basement, there'll be a meter in the well, water. You, yeah. can, you, can, you can visually see the pipe. I'm sorry? You can visually see the pipe. Yeah. Just scratch it to see. Ours is no steel. Okay, if I scratch mine, what am I looking for? <laughs> 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 Let's really soft. If you just want to tap it with something metal, it'll go to the five instead of a clank. Yeah, that's pretty good. Can you get a try? Okay, it'll go to tomorrow. We did last year. Okay, other questions? Peter? Yeah. Originally there was a promise or maybe it was just a dream of using the individual customer uh, readings to uh, encourage people to be more efficient or find leaks for them or whatever. Is, 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 that, is that anywhere on his... Uh, well, that's the water replacement, the meter replacement. Well, that would, that, that would make the meters more efficient, but you could still have leaks all over your house. They could <coughs> it's Since they have all this stuff digitized now, supposedly, I guess really, uh, <coughs> it would be possible to look for houses that were particularly out of line. Um, it had a change from last year. Where were they... Uh, Water coming in uh, versus water going out? No, the, um, just the amount of water usage. Right, well, the meters would kind of do... The, the older meters are very inaccurate, <coughs> my understanding is. No, no, I'm talking about use of the data that's collected from the water meters, new or old. Right. So the systems were, were digitized there a few years ago. So somewhere... in at least temporarily, there, there, there's a record of everybody's meter readings. You mean like the gas company does to tell you that you're worse than normal? For example, like the gas company does, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 there, there is a, a personal motivation to lower your use because the water rate is progressive. The more you use, the more you pay per gallon. But uh, when, when the new meter program came in, there was certainly uh, a talk about if they notice all of a sudden your water consumption double, they're going to say, you might have a leak. Uh, you know, so so we, I don't know what's happening, but in theory, you're right. With the new metering system and the more frequent reading, they can tell a big change, which might come back to you and say, oh, your toilet's leaking, or you have a pipe burst. Right. But so I, thought we, I don't know if they're doing it. But if you remember, our big, um, our, our big challenge tends to be the concept of unaccounted for water. You know, I mean... And I think we've seen it over the years where before they started aggressively replacing the pipes, and we had that, remember if you remember that we had that really big number, like 40% of all water was unaccounted for. And then I think sort of the combination of replacing the older pipes and like Peter said, the metering technology, that number's really come down pretty significantly. I don't think we're Las Vegas. I remember, and it was not this DPW director, I thought one of the prior DPW directors might have referenced to like, Las Vegas, Nevada having only like two or three percent unaccounted for water. Like I don't think we're in that, right? Because we're not in the middle of a desert. But um, but I think that you know, I mean, I think that's the valid point all around, which is the more you get that number down, the better impact it, the lower it will the more the water is accounted for, the lower the rates will go, at least maintain at the level. Okay, are there any other questions on the water and sewer budget? Brian? Um Revenues for this year, do they expect more or less? Increased revenue from? No, just from year to year. Yeah. So what they've been collecting, what are, what's the expectation? He, um, <coughs> the expectation is about the same. Um, I think what we had been using, I guess the demand for water, I guess the note I had from last year is that we're using more water uh, than we did last year, but relative to the other towns, we're actually using less. That, so we're using a little bit more, but everyone else is using more. So the revenues will be up? Uh, well, at the same time, what uh, he's also saying is that there's that contra effect that the more, since the rates are going up, and there were sort of, um, yeah, yes, the revenue would stay about flat or level. 
kind of like we, we encourage conservation, and, but if people conserve too much, you have to raise the rates because it's fixed <laughs> <laughs> cost. Right, because it's a fixed cost. But, but yes, they do expect it to be relatively flat. No need for any raise, okay. raises. That was the essence of it. Any other questions? Okay, uh, so your recommendation is for 19975567 that your motion? Yes, it is. Second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of that, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That, which is the budgets, and I don't think <coughs> Well, which um, budgets are one articles? Budgets, so I can just tell But they require a revote if they're big enough. No, they're not. I want to say it's 8,000. Okay, so the bottom line is the same? Yeah. Okay. Any other? Uh, okay, I was about to. Article 44. Okay, here's, here's you know, all the budgets. Um, I want to send this out to the reviewers, meaning the, the front part, the word part. Uh, I want to send this out Thursday. Um, so if you find any corrections, misspellings, you know, if, if, if you don't like my writing abilities, please be gentle. Uh, you know, please get back to me by then. Um, and then we'll probably go to, we will go to print, uh, literally that night of the uh, April 13th. If you see any problems, please go through them this week. With the budgets, you know, please get to Alan on those. Okay, so Article 44. Don't. No, head counts, footnotes. Um, if I said 16, or I should have said 17. <coughs> okay, so the uh, the only thing under 44 we had was the uh, Arlington Tourism and Economic Development, which we did vote. Is there anything else there? The bottom line. <coughs> Uh, I just add that up. I mean, we, we voted each individual item. Do you have a bottom line? No. Oh. I gave it to you the other night. Oh. But you did um, okay. okay. Okay, so for Article 44, it's $29,835 total. I think we've all voted the individual, but somebody make a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, uh, all those in favor for total for Article 49, $29,835. Okay, uh, is there any other? Article 44. Well, Article 44. 44. 44. Okay. The overlay reserve. Two hundred thousand. Is two hundred? Okay. Okay. So article fifty-two. Did you do the open access fund? The transfer 
Well, uh, let me finish this first, then. Right. Okay, so Article 52, Appropriation Overlay Reserve, uh, that the sum of $200,000 be in here by appropriated, be transferred from the Overlay Reserve surplus. So that's the number the assessor would give us. Um, any questions on that? Okay, this is just money left over from the uh, uh, prior year overlays that they don't need anymore. So we're just using it to in the setting of the tax rate. Okay, uh, do I have a motion? No move. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, the other one was uh, Article 50. The only number that we weren't sure about is C. Or Charlie, uh, this is the amount that we're transferring from the uh, Health Insurance Trust Fund right. to, to the OTEP fund. Okay. And you're saying, I don't, I don't have a C, but it's the amount that will be 300,000. Okay, so that's the amount you recommend? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay, so this is Article 50, footnote C, 300,000 to be transferred from the health insurance trust fund that Bill just described into the OPEB fund, which is the same amount I think we've done for the last several years. Are there any questions on that? Okay, Carolyn, is that your motion? That's my motion. However, the total for We're just voting C because we've already voted the other two. Right. Yeah. So this is just C, 300000 from the trust fund into the OPEP fund. And that will combine that with A, 413000 and B, 155000 which we've already voted. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Is there any discussion? Oh, wait. Was there a second to that motion? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of uh, appropriating and transferring 300000 from the health, uh, health Benefits Trust to the OPEP Fund, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> okay, is there anything else? So 53, the special education, we're still waiting for the school committee on that? Yeah, it, it's, and we're probably going to be waiting about that until early May. Uh, I, I went through a lot of conversations with the controller. Uh, he finally understood. And, uh, you know, he, he's coming from a city, and sometimes they do things differently there. So we had to sort of walk through what happened last year and this year. So um, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to be getting a reserve fund transfer request from the school department. Um, we'll transfer the 200000 from the reserve fund into the school department. And then, the ten, and then they will release that plus any other money they come up with. And then town meeting will transfer that from the school department budget of this year into the special education stabilization fund. So all be above board. Uh, anything else? Okay, we'll do the fiscal stability stabilization fund uh, probably on April 13th. That'll be the last one to do. Is there anything else? Peter? Are you going to change that vote in your report, Article 53, to vote it later or something? Okay. Uh, now, I'll probably just leave it the way it is so people know I just have to fill in a number. Carolyn? I had a couple of questions that people have that I got the answers to. Go ahead. Did the OPEP transfer? Um, there's an eight point six thousand dollars that's going into the comptroller's budget for IT training around the new system that uh, gets put in eventually in the next year. And then um, the 
David Good and Sandy Poole are working on the, op the IT operating costs of CPA and making sure that they charge the CPA fund the amounts that they used in 2016, 2017, and if anything was done in 2015, which I don't think it was, they'll add those in as well. And so they're working on that now. Um, and that we don't really that we really don't have to worry about in terms of the budget, but that is being addressed. And then someone asked about the retirement audit that's done every other year, so I have one with me, but the next one won't be done until late, late this year. Okay. That's it. Any questions? Is there any other business? No. Uh, okay, John. What about Article 6 in the special town meeting? Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School. What, do we vote anything there that I missed possibly or? No, that, uh, that'll be uh, April 13th. Because uh, we're waiting for the special group to study it and make a recommendation and come back for sale. Obviously, they have to do it very quickly. Um, but they've been following the issue right along. So uh, the, the fiscal stability, fiscal stability stabilization fund, or the override stabilization fund, we will vote on April 13th. The Minuteman will vote on April 13th. And I think one or two items. Uh, and the school enrollment will vote on April 13th. So we will be meeting on April 13th uh, and uh, on, on some fairly big issues. But not till then? I'm sorry? Oh. On Wednesday, uh, we will be, uh, the uh, CPA will be coming before us to present it. Now, uh, as I said before, they will be presenting before town meeting. We'll just be, you know, giving it our blessing or not give it our blessing or make recommendations and feedback because uh, they haven't voted it yet. They'll go after they leave here, they'll go and vote it. Um, so, um, uh, I, I believe I sent that to everybody, so uh, their recommendations, it's not terribly big. Um, um, so that will do. And then any other corrections or anything, uh, please look through uh, and, and try to get feedback as much as, uh, as possible. Okay? I'd like to see the two Johns and Alan right after the meeting. Okay? Meeting adjourned.